again, that's where I talk about like just reviewing your own stuff. Um, you know, you might be missing out that that simple fix that you just talked about could probably yield the dealership some kind of percentage in conversions. Oh, I mean, let's say it's sure. 10-15%. You know, I think we would all take that in today's world, right? All right, welcome back into Facts Not Feelings, the place where data drives our discussions. I am your host, Brooke Furness, and today we are peeling back the layers of the digital marketing world. Heart be still, I know, but we're going to get a laser focus on the automotive industry. Have you ever wondered how the fast-paced campaigns in digital marketing are reshaping the way dealerships operate? Well, you are in luck. Joining us today is the master of marketing, Chad Graves, VP of Sales, and the strategic mind behind your union marketing. Chad, welcome into the show, friend. How are you doing? Yeah, thanks so much, Brooke. I, I don't know that I can actually take credit for being the strategic mind behind Reunion, but I'll take credit for being part of it. Uh, we got a lot of great people over here um, that I'm just happy to represent. And uh, thanks so much for that. I'm excited to be here talking to you today. Uh, I'm super, super stoked today. I was going through when you said over the topic and like going over the notes and the questions, what have you, I go, man. Dude, we're set to uncover some game-changing insights today, and I'm super, super excited to uncover them with you. Absolutely. Me too. Yeah. I mean, I think like we were just talking about before we hit record, there's so much changing and so quickly. We're obviously just coming off the heels of some big conference events and things like that in the industry where, um, you know, I, I think some good, a lot of good is coming out of it. I think there's things that we still need to be worried about and have our eye on uh, beyond just, you know, reworking the sales deals and understanding that flow. Uh, so I'm excited to dive into it today. I, I, I am super, super stoked to to dive in this, especially like what we were talking beforehand, just some of the chaos that's happened this, today. And so I was like, oh, look at this. I get to talk to Chad about some of these fun filled yeah, topics. Perfect. <laughs> perfect timing, right? <laughs> right. Um, nothing like unfortunate, the unfortunate side of the lack of transparency that still exists. Um, obviously something I know you fight a lot against as well as so philosophy we we both share in common for sure. Yes, very, very true. All right. So with the digital marketing industry changing faster than it ever has, dealerships are facing new challenges, but they're also facing a lot of opportunities. So to kick this whole thing off, can yeah. you share your insights? Just, just a small question, by the way. Can you share your insights <laughs> on how to balance the power, how it's shifting between dealerships, the third party sites, and the huge, massive, big players like Google and a little thing called the OEMs? Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, nothing like a, an easy softball question to get it started. Um, obviously, there's so much to unpack there, right? I mean, but what we're seeing right now is, I think, some evolution in marketing and how dealerships are interacting with marketing that is moving faster than, than maybe what a lot of people have historically done, especially if you look at the last you know, COVID to, to inventory shortages and beyond, right? So I'll try and break into each one of those segments. And I think, you know, for me, when you look at just like the Google and OE and the OEM in general with those two, for me, what you start to see is just more and more of the control trying to come from those folks, right? Um, you've got Google who's pulling back on what you can see. You know, you just saw them move VLAs into performance max campaigns. That's, you know, obviously you, you lose some of the strategy and how much budget you can attribute to some of those things. And, you know, they're, they're pulling back. I mean, they've also laid off their support team pretty significantly in the last year, um, reducing the, the partner program. And all of that is, you know, Google's way of saying, hey, we know how to spend your money. You should spend more of it and spend it with us. And then you've got the OEM kind of saying the same thing, right? Of like, hey, we don't really care who sells the car as long as it is our car being sold. So use our vendors, use our team, use our people that, you know, we have vetted. And, and you know, I think I have my own opinions on how that should work and what that relationship can be like. Um, and those are two things though, that are creating an opportunity for dealerships to, I think, step outside the box, do get a little bit more crafty, work with people who maybe have your interests best at best heart, right? And really can do some cool things outside of that. I mean, it's been fun for us to lean back into the, you know, Google organic landscape and really focus on the SEO side of things because we do feel that there's opportunities there for dealers to take back some of the real estate that we've invested in third-party sites and stuff like that, right? The average dealer is still invested heavily in third parties. And I do believe they have a place. So I don't want anybody to be like, ah, oh, Chad said, get rid of all third parties. Like, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying know where they fit in your marketing budget and your plan for what you're trying to do, which is ultimately 
get shoppers back to our website and looking at our vehicles, right? Um, so there's a lot with changing with each one of those people. And I think for dealerships, it's just about understanding what is changing, finding partners who can help educate you, and then how can we stay one step ahead of the curve, right? And I think that's obviously the goal with what we're trying to do. I agree full heartedly. And it's when you're looking at all these changes, whether it's SEO or the social, whether it's SEM, whatever it may be, understanding, okay, why am I being asked to do X? Is it because yeah. Google just says spend more? I mean, how many or, times do you and I both sit in the meetings where some company is saying to the dealer, oh, you're spending X amount. You should spend another thousand percent more. Totally. Why? Well, because Google says so. Well, no, no, that's yeah. not a reason. Or whatever, maybe you're looking to say, well, Google will always want you to spend more money. And you look at the OEMs. This is not an OEM bashing segment. Just look right. and say, why? Well, it's co-opable. Great, Correct. but is it the best product for you? Because we all, if you've been in the game long enough, you know that you're going to blow through that co op money so fast, like so quickly, you'll never even see that money. So, is it really worth it to be going with that just because the OEM said to? Or are you being strong armed to say you have to go with this or we're going to take cars back to me or whatever it may be? So, sure. really understanding. And yeah. then I'm sure we'll get this later on, but like the data portion of it. Okay. I mean, how many pilots do you see pop up that says, if you read the fine print, which no one ever seems to do, except I think myself and a few others, is to go through and say, okay, am I giving up my first unborn child and not even knowing it? If you're, right. I've, I've given the iTunes, uh, the Apple example, love right. Apple. If you actually, and I don't know if it's still like this, but a couple years ago, if you read the fine print, it specifically stated you must buy another Apple product in two years. Now, yeah. did they hold anybody that? No, but you signed up on this. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, totally guilty of not reading the fine print all the time. Um, but yeah, I think you're exactly right. I mean, it's, you know, and that's what you're starting to see with, I think, your more progressive dealers, dealerships that are super interested in how marketing affects their bottom line or marketing dollar per car sold and um, tweaking those to get measurable differences. Right. And I think, you know, you and I both believe that it's through testing, it's through understanding those kind of finite details of how these things can all work together. Right. Like it may be a co-op approved system, but if it doesn't work well with the rest of your initiatives, then, you know, are you really just kind of taking advantage of something that's not in your best interest? Um, so it's just a matter of dealers understanding what's best for them and then measuring that, right. And then measuring it to see if it actually holds through on what they expect. And does it actually generate the return that they anticipate? Um, which is obviously, you know, the ultimate judge if it's working or not. Right. <laughs> Amen. Like there, yes. And like when I was going to that first question, I was going, man, we could spend the entire show just oh. on that one question. Yeah, <laughs> so. absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, real softball to break into it. But no, I think it's <laughs> dealership should be, you know, I we I talk to a lot of clients and I have been now for multiple months, right? Where, you know, they've been very transparent that like it's been easy for them to do business in the last two years. I mean, the car business is always challenging in its own way, but you know there's people right now who are saying, Oh crap, like I've got to get back to training a sales team and I've got to get back to understanding my lead follow-up process and response time. And what do those things look like? And you know, that, that often though allows us to take the ball off, eye off the ball of some of the marketing efforts. And mm -hmm. you know, that's nobody's fault. It's just like, you got to have that network of support because it inevitably it's going to continue to be more challenging. I think over the next six months, nine months to a year. I could not agree more. I know we've seen it since the start of this year, just how things have changed. And it's like totally. our industry is such that when the pendulum swings one way, it's always going to swing back and it'll eventually like go all the way over here and then yeah. we'll get back to the middle. But right. we're, we've been in this volatile uh, environment for so long that there's there have been so many changes. So speaking of changes, right. the inventory dynamics have been mm -hmm. just a roller coaster. I mean, you look over since 2020. I mean, I could say lately, but really it's been since 2020. So mm -hmm. how do you see these fluctuation impacting digital marketing strategies for dealerships? Yeah, great question. Um, for me, I think at the end of the day, don't lose sight of the fact that why are people usually coming to our site? It's to shop for inventory and look for vehicles, right? So you have to take care of the basics of like the merchandising and the properly pricing, things like that. What I'm like talking about with this answer is like, now how do you actually drive more people to that? Um, and one thing to note, right? And we just talked about Google is, you know, recommending higher spends is that if you go all in on a bin specific strategy, which some people really agree with that. And some people will tell you that's the best way. I think there's some, some merits to it, right? 
but just keep in mind what your cost is and what you're willing to spend, right? Uh, what is your marketing dollar per car sold goal? That's coming back from my background, from coming from a large dealer group with some of the other partners of Reunion. Like that's where we started all conversations. Like, can this help lower or make our results better for our marketing dollar per car sold? And that's where, you know, often we start to shed some light on the SEO side of things because of the fact you know, most dealerships are spending more in search or on third parties or whatever it may be to overcompensate for lack of visibility in SEO, right? Yeah. Um, and so how can you drive people to specific vehicles while covering your more regional and general basis with an organic approach in your backyard? Then you can move your paid search and, and other spends that are more VIN specific or car specific in and around the mix to make sure that you're filling in the gaps with where you don't show up. And that's ultimately what I think dealers should be looking for is like, how can we be as efficient as possible? And, you know, for me, it's not always just investing. If you're a Honda dealership, you're, you know, late 2000s and, you know, 2019 Honda Accord is going to sell, right? It's just going to sell. So what's the inventory on your lot that maybe isn't going to just attract the natural eyeballs and what's your plan for that? And that's even outside of, you know, the realm that reunion lives in, but those are the things I would encourage people to be thinking about is like, as my inventory comes back, what else am I going to be doing? Right. Because the competition is getting more severe. You're starting to see, you know, dealerships spend more on search because of the fact they've got inventory. We've got to move it. Right. So keep that in mind and understanding the competitive landscape would be my second piece of advice that I think is super important because if your neighbor across the street does have more inventory than you and they are dwarfing your spend, it's going to be hard for you to catch up by doing the same things. So try new things, experiment with new things, see what else is out there and, and see what you can do with your digital marketing from that case in order to drive inventory views. There was so many like these little nuggets through that, your entire answer there. And a couple of things I've taken away from it. Like you look at, you think the so first one is someone is always going to be able to spend more than you. Even if yeah. you are the biggest group yep. in the world, the OEM will spend more money than you. Like sure. you just, that's, yeah, deal absolutely. with it. So understand that. And then when I've seen as well, like when another OEM is coming out with a competitive product, a competitive model, they also start buying all those words. Well, you're not going to outspend them. So what are you doing to make up for that? And if you go into your analytics right now and, and paid search number one way, I have a little bit of a problem with that. That's just the yeah. way that I was raised. It should be organic first. I mean, those, <laughs> Me and things could also Clearly. not be tagged correctly. So looking sure. at it and saying, okay, not every single vehicle on your lot needs to be advertised. And this yep. is something that I see all the time. They're, they're spending on all these different vehicles. I go, but if you go and look at the, if you go and look at things, I can see you brought up Honda. I can see your Honda Civic or your Honda, whatever it may be, Accord is people are finding it more on organic. So why would I go spend more sure. on paid? They're already yep. finding it. They're finding it on organic social. Okay, great. Once again, why are we sinking money into a paid area or on the, on the flip side? Hey, they're finding it mainly on paid. Okay. Yep. I know that I want to keep that paid, but I need to also bolster my SEO. There's so many things to unpack and looking at that. And yeah, I just, I, I, one of these, like when we do these shows, I always go back and watch them multiple times to, cause as you're talking, you, you want to pay attention and listen and not seek to rebuttal or, or respond. Sure. But it's like that, that last, the, the entire answer there was like, yes, yes. Check the box, check the box. There's just so much to unpack there. So as we're talking all about the SEO portion of it and making sure that that's bolsters up, it's such a good way to stand out in the, in our digital crowd and, uh, and online. So in terms of that, uh, in terms of SEO get thrown around a yep. lot, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> Could you right. break down the robust SEO strategy that really entails for a dealership? What it entails for a dealership mm -hmm. today? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously the topic I'm probably most passionate about is just dealerships gaining an organic foothold and, and reducing the dependency on some of the things you just talked about. Uh, but when I break SEO down, I like to look at it, honestly, for me in about four distinct kind of pillars, if you will. The first of which for me would be like, keywords and content marketing. Like, what are you trying to rank for? What are the things you should be ranking for? And then do you have unique pieces of content on your site that help bring consumers in, right? Like, are you ranking well in Google with the pages that you want to, right? You should have a content marketing strategy as part of your SEO. It should be unique, should be unique to you, to your market, et cetera, right? That's just pillar one. Pillar two would be all the stuff happening off the site, like local SEO, Google business profile, obviously, most dealers today widely accept that as the new front door to your dealership, right? I think for reunion, last time I looked, and uh, if anybody's watching this, don't hold me 100% accountable to the numbers from our SEO team, but 
I think the average dealership we have seen in their Google business profile, seen in search about three times the amount their homepage is visited, right? Like we used to clutter up. You remember we throw 20 banners on our homepage because like that's where we thought everybody was going. Now it's like, no, they're not going there. They're, they're stopping at GBP more often than not. And then like, that's just one of them. Apple Business Connect. There's a lot of directories that are out there that all tie into this now, right? And then pillar three is like, the technical part. I like to call it the least sexy part of the job, right? It's your meta titles, descriptions, H1s. Not that any part of SEO is sexy, but if that <laughs> that part is definitely the least sexy of the three or four, right? Uh, but it's super important. And it's like, Wait. it's amazing how often we look at sites and, you know, there's historic content on there that's never been upgraded or updated with the proper technical elements, or there's broken links and broken pages. And Obviously, we know both Google and consumers do not appreciate that when they land on your website and it's broken, right? So fix that stuff up. And that's, you know, a big part of it. And then the fourth part, man, it's like, it's all about the UX conversion and site speed, right? Like those are things that you have to tackle in that kind of fourth pillar, which I would call like UX conversion, whatever that may be. Um, but essentially, like, can I get to where I want on the website and can I quickly you know, put my information in or reach out to a salesperson. And it's amazing. Uh, the record today, fun fact is in all of our analysis, the record is 13 calls to action on one VDP. Um, you know, not only is it slow, but your consumer gets there and they're like, I don't know what to do here. They've got four trade-in, you know, tools. We've got multiple calls to action and, and the customer freezes and then ultimately you lose them and they're gone. Right. So paying attention to that, um, seeing your site on how that loads and how it works on multiple devices, that's that fourth pillar. And if you're doing all four of those things, um, the chances are you're, you're head and above head and shoulders above the competition from what you're going to be able to do from an SEO standpoint. Oh, the button fatigue, man. That is, that is uh, another real, hot button. With me. Hot button, <laughs> like, hot button like, and, yeah. You know, it, it, it's amazing. Uh, it's, it's super amazing what we see. And we, we do a lot of analysis. We look at a lot of dealerships, websites, and it's, uh, it's amazing how many times, you know, we will uncover and like, Hey, look, whether you do business with us or not, we obviously hope you do, but I do want you to know that right now you're paying for two trade appraisals and two digital retailing leads or form submissions. And they're both on your VDP. And, you know, I don't know. And they're like, oh man, that one was supposed to be canceled or like, you know, and it, it just falls through the cracks. And again, like that's where you got to have that support network checking your back. But man, it's, it's, it's not something I still thought we'd be talking about in, you know, 2024 yet. Uh, yes. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. So I think it's going to get worse because like, you know, I think we're as, as more folks in, you know, try and encourage outreach through AI and other things like that, you know, You've got a lot of people looking for secondary financing that are going to add buttons to the website. So again, it's just something I think dealerships should be really cognizant of this year, honestly. Yes. And I, the one that I've seen over the last, that's drives me bonkers. Well, one, they're not working or, Hey, we're going to connect all the, the, the TTAs to chat. And then there's one that's missing. It brings up a form, but I was, I was just on a site today and the OEM mandates that they have to have this little video that pops up. Well, it covers up the yeah. chat. Fun. So you can't yeah, even get to the right. chat. I was like, now the video itself is so distracting. Like no sure. one ever look. I mean, you can look at anything. Like people don't click on that stuff. But yeah. I was like, I, well, that's interesting because the chat used to be over on the other side, and this this dealership had moved it to the other side. Cool. So you can't even get to it. Lovely. Like, yeah. What that's, are we doing here? Right. Can you imagine that and on I mean, mobile? Right. Well, and you you have to imagine too, right? More than likely, that dealership is closed at some hour of the day, and chat's the only way to get a hold of somebody after hours. And now you just nixed that from your site's capabilities. Like, again, that's where I talk about like just reviewing your own stuff. Um, you know, you might be missing out that that simple fix that you just talked about could probably yield the dealership some kind of percentage in conversions. Oh, I mean, let's say it's sure. 10, 15%, you know, I think we would all take that in today's world. Right. So, yeah. I mean, what can you do if you just investigate your own stuff? Yeah. And, and a lot of times like, you, you see it for, you see it all the time. And so sometimes you need it that I, I always have, uh, encouraged to get an outside look on it, whether it's the receptionist, whether it's your spouse, a friend, that, because what we may feel it's, oh, it's awesome because I was totally. the one that designed it. Well, you need yeah. somebody else to get in there and say, mm, actually your baby's ugly, Brooke, and here's why it's ugly, but uh, your baby can be gorgeous after you do this. So a little yeah, uh, totally. baby makeup. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. The first, uh, the first store I ever worked at, uh, general manager is super smart guy. 
Uh, it was a Mercedes dealership here in, in Cary, North Carolina. And the GM, he would tell each of his managers to set their like main login screen as a different page of the website and just continually evaluate it, you know, over and over um, and then switch it up. And then, you know, so he was really smart about doing things like that. It's always stuck with me. He would have them, you know, people in the room pull up the website on the tablet, whether it was an iPad or a phone or whatever, and just get feedback like right in the moment. And it was like, you know, as somebody that was handling his marketing, it was terrifying, but I mean, it worked out really well for the most part. And it was like always really sharp, but I, I think about it often. It's like just that consistent looking at things and seeing how would it make it better, right? Like why not try that? So it, it was a great learning yeah. experience. Could not agree more. And it is, it's, it's so vital because especially if you're asking one person to look at it, the entire site all the time that that's yeah. impossible to do. Like awesome. it usually falls on totally. a digital marketing person who's wearing 30,000 hats. Like, Oh, by the way, make sure every page looks great. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm, on sure. I'm on it. Yeah. <laughs> let me, let me do that tonight. Um, not easy, right? Not easy. <laughs> yeah. I had a, uh, a client that, uh, is a client I, 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 dealership. I knew that sure. they were changing website providers and wanted to migrate over 900 oh, yeah. different pages. And it was the person that set up was only doing it as more of a, as a, a, a keyword stuffer. So yeah, the pages sure. weren't really legitimate. I go, All this does absolutely nothing for you. So then there was this friction between them and the other new website providers saying, oh, well, you can't. I'm like, you guys, you don't need 900 pages. Like 900 pages? What are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, Brooke, you'd be, I, it, it's a, it's not a rare request in our, <laughs> in our world or on our side of the fence right now. For somebody to be like, look, I got to, I got to change website providers and I need to move all my content over. And it's like, well, a third, three quarters of it, it's not ranking. Like, you, you know, here, here's the rankings that prove it of the pages that are ranking. Let's start there. And then it's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, and you know, we love to switch websites. Um, you know, there's a lot you can do before you get to that stage in my mind. Oh, um, yeah. you know, and, and that, that's a whole other, you know, topic of combo we could go down, but <laughs> most part i'll just say you know i resisting that itch to just like make a switch whenever we feel like it right for you mm -hmm. um or you know that we just feel like something's not working it's like well let's really dig in like find the root cause before we just like try and move over 900 pages um because uh we we have had people 900 is a lot i have definitely had people ask about two to three hundred like that's not crazy that's a that's yeah. a i mean it is crazy but it isn't a normal ask that we get a lot so it happens. And that's the thing. And I, I've been part, I'm in the dealership world and obviously outside the dealership world of being yep. in those changes. And I remember working with the website and we'd done all the analysis, like, Hey, it's time to make a switch, blah, blah, blah. And it was very beneficial at the time when they did that. But the first thing that I just go, I understand you're not going to move all the pages. Here's what I'm seeing. Going back to your point of like, these are the ones that are ranking from yep. there. We're going to need this and this because the other one was, you know, proprietary bullshit that couldn't be transferred over. I was like, okay, but right. you really go through it and do the analysis to say, which these pages actually need to be transferred. Yeah. Because then from there, whoever's doing your SEO is got to optimize all that. And it's going to take a long, long time. It doesn't just happen overnight. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, you know, we, and we work out different things depending on the client, what they are looking for, what their goals are. But, you know, to your point, like we, you should do the research first before you say, all right, let's just, you know, try and move all these pages over. Because while it, it was probably a lot of hard work to get those pages created, you know, not, they're not all created equal. And sometimes they were from the OEM. And if you look at it and, you know, every store around you has the same page, like there's not a lot of value in bringing that over. Right. So um, you just have to evaluate it and, and look at what makes the most sense and then, and then figure that out with your partner. Right. Because that's ultimately how it gets done. Amen. So we obviously know at this point, if you don't know, SEO is a really like that cornerstone of digital yep. marketing. So looking ahead, what major trends do you predict will dominate in digital market in the digital marketing space for dealerships in the next few years? Sure. Um, that's another thing that we could spend just a ton of time talking about. <laughs> right. Um, I think it boils down. I mean, I think there's several things we already touched on one of them, but I, I do like, I think that dealerships should be very closely watching what's happening with Google right now and, and how they're shifting priorities and how they're trying to encourage more and more spend because there does come a point where you just have to be like, what is the point of diminishing returns and how much am I doing with that? Um, you know, so I think that, you know, just the, the third, the, the search engine platform stuff is something we got to watch. Right. Um, number two, I think you're seeing, and uh, obviously the trend out of NADA, which, you know, I'm not sure when this episode will air, but obviously that's just coming a, a little bit after that, 
you know, AI was obviously something that a lot of people were talking about and asking about. And like, I remember when we start, first started talking about AI, some of our original clients that we test a lot of things with were like, Ooh, I don't know about that. You know, I'm not so sure about this AI stuff. And I think it's becoming, uh, you know, more accepted that like it's, it's, it's here and it's not going anywhere. And in fact, it's going to obviously grow faster than I think any of us even imagined. So how are you introducing AI into both your digital marketing, your processes? How is that looking for you? Like you have to have that understanding. I'm not saying it should replace people, but it, it will make your people better. It will make your marketing more efficient. So how is it being used? There's a lot of companies out there, you know, not just Reunion, but other people that are utilizing AI and digital marketing, I think in some cool ways right now, um, you know, getting feedback and, and, and it's growing quickly and they're going to continue to push on that, I think. Um, gosh, what else? I mean, there's so much with, I really do believe that again, we're going to kind of hit that level where people are like, Ooh, I'm spending a lot of money or, you know, how is this being calculated? So that's where I would just like lean back into what we have previously done with like pump in, pump out reports, first party data, maximize your own customer base first, maximize your backyard first, take care of the people who are you know, doing business with you today um, and try and work those avenues, even through your marketing. Um, I think fixed ops marketing is going to continue to grow as people have are going to keep their vehicles longer, I think, and the vehicles should last longer. So all of those things are already happening right now, I think. Um, so it's just a matter of which one continues to, uh, you know, build the most. Um, and then my advice on all of that would be like, try it all, see what makes sense. And then as the market and your dealership changes and moves, like don't be scared to like to go back to something else, right? And my my example with that is like a year ago we were pumping out EV content and you know we had a lot of budget going to EV models and you know a lot a lot of people and now it's everybody's like man eh, you know nobody wants them so let's just chill, right? And we all know that, but like that that's an example where it's like that's when it's okay to make a pivot, right? It's like when your customers are not responding to what you're doing um, and it's pretty clear, then then that's where I think you have to be willing to, you know, pivot into one of those other things, whether that's fixed ops or try something AI related. Um, there's something, there's some cool stuff out there that I think is all going to hit the digital marketing scope. It's just a matter of how much do you want to try and how much are, what's your, what's your tolerance for things, maybe having some hiccups or, you know, maybe not working perfect, but man, it's got an idea like, that's that's the fun stuff to be trying right now too. Yeah, and I think I mean I know we've talked about AI quite a bit on the show, but just to go back to say, is it is it true AI or is it? And I'll use uh, Greg Ashnar talked about this the other day, and just sure. is it if then then what you know right. what type of yeah. AI is it? And then do you own it? Do you, you know what's the legal ramifications of it? Oh, totally. it's a chat. Okay, we're gonna have a chat that goes off the rails and sells a car for a penny. Like, what are we doing with the AI? And really try to break it. I mean, there's been multiple all but one product that I've seen will all type in, you know, to that, to that same thing that the consumer did with that store yep. or the chat to say, okay, Hey, my out the door pricing looks like this, blah, blah, from your KBB, from your trading tool. And I've only found one product to date that will say, you need to come to the store and mm. we need to take a look at it. Every other one will give you a number out the door. And it's like, oh, interesting. you've never seen my car. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I mean, yeah, that's, that's obviously scary. Right. Um, that's where for me, like, I don't know what all the the impacts are going to be, right? That's where I think you you nailed it. Like try to break it, see what mm -hmm. you can do, see how far you can push it. Um, but I mean, in general, I think digital marketing, like, if it's not the cornerstone of your marketing efforts in general at this point, then, you know, uh, but I'll be damned if I, I guess I'm the first one to cuss on the show. I would have bet it would have no. been you. Um, no, but I mean, we dropped that bombs on the show. We're good. Yeah, this episode. How about that? Oh, no. um, okay, we got, I got you covered. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's. I know I'm not the first person, uh, but maybe today. So, and I don't even know where I was going with that now. Um, uh, okay, AI tacos. Um, uh, breaking things, and yeah. you'd be damned if something, and then it went off the rails there. I don't know. Yeah, we went <laughs> off the rails. We'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, it'll we'll come back. back to it. Yeah, we'll let's keep talking about SEO here a little bit, just because it yeah, is such perfect. an important portion of what we do. It's yeah. crucial. Integration is crucial. Everything to part of the SEO yep. effort. So looking at the SEO effort to be aligned with other digital marketing channels, how do you do that to have the maximum impact? Oh, I love it. Um, so one, I think you are you should have, and obviously we do more than SEO, but that's like our bread and butter, right? And so for me, 
um, I always tell clients like, look, like we may not be the perfect fit for a full service for you, right? Like you may have, there's some really great companies in search. There's some really great companies that do social. There's some really great companies that do other pieces of marketing. Um, and what some of our best clients are doing today is having just one, you know, meeting with all of us at times, especially SEO and search. Like that's where I usually find that we have the most balance because I do think that you should kind of have an idea, right? Because our goal is to help a dealership get an idea of where are they ranking today? And I'll just use like our geos here. Like, where are we in Raleigh, which is where your dealership's located? You know, what's our opportunity to grow in Cary, which is a great area beside us. Our next competitor is in Durham. How do we look from an organic visibility standpoint in all three of those geos? Let's understand that together for new, for use, for fixed. As we climb the organic rankings, we should be adjusting our paid strategy slightly, right? Like, uh, I mean, buying, uh, you know, Toyota oil change in Raleigh right now is a very expensive keyword. We can own that in organic, but now what can we do with that paid budget? Maybe there are inventory pieces we can go after. Maybe there are higher premium services that we can go after. And I would still, so for me, I look at it like the ground up, right? If SEO is your foundation, cover as much ground in our backyard as we can use paid search to fill in those holes and, and go after specific areas, right? Again, that's where we talk about pump in, pump out, conquesting, things like that, and get creative. There's a lot of cool things you can do out there, especially if you look at some of the CDP world out there and some of the data that's you know in some of those places and companies, what they can do. Layer social in to hit people who are even higher up the funnel. That's where I like it best, the AI, AIAs. It's not always where dealerships think is the most fun thing to talk about, but like, it's where your best results are going to be from a social yep. media standpoint today. And if you're hitting people who are all the way up the funnel, all the way down to the bottom, then that's where I think you're going to win the battle because most dealerships are either very focused at the top or they're very focused at the bottom. And so if you can kind of blend your media mix to hit people who are in that frequency, or, you know, I live in a market where there's more people moving in than ever before, like, People haven't always heard of you. So like be cognizant of that, right? Um, that that day is kind of gone. Like I, the brand loyalty is at an all time low. I don't think that's going to change. Um, you know, for me personally, I'm a car guy. Like I love vehicles, but man, it's hard to tell the difference between some midsize SUV brands today. So like mm -hmm. I'm going to go with payments and features, right? So regardless of brand. So my point in saying that is know that, know the audience and how are you doing that in your digital marketing? I obviously think it should be starting with that SEO and owning that organic, but there's a lot of other layers that you can build on top of it to make sure you're hitting people up and down the funnel that may or may not have heard of you. Mike drop moment right there. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. It is where I can keep going, right? <laughs> I mean, it's so fun. It drives me bonkers. I look at some of these, uh, and once you had paid search, anyone that knows me or has been watching the show, I am, you need both. It's a nice mixture. Amen. Are you yeah. buying terms that people are always, they're going to find you organically? If yeah, you totally. are, then you're lighting your money on fire. Unless there's a very rare chance that you'll have to buy your own name. If you do only put like 500 bucks towards it. Yeah. All that to be said, when I, when I look at this and say, wait, so if I Google your name, what am I going to click on? Like, let's just go Google, you know, Jordan fours or Jordan 11s. Yep. What are you clicking on? You're not clicking on a paid. Now, some people will click on it, but the majority are going to go to the, the Google business profile. You're going to click there. Or they're going to see that maybe right. for me, I, I have all my ads blocked, so I don't even see ads. Then bring it up and say, okay, if I click here, why are you paying for that? So going to your oil change one, it, do I really need to be paying for it? Or is this something I'm just being told I need to pay for because it yeah. gets people more money? Uh, right. All right. That, that yeah. age old question. I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, I think that you just have to be looking at your spends. I mean, we still ultimately, like we, we, like we analyze a dealership recently healthy budget, honestly, like I thought they were spending appropriately. And then you dig in, they're like, we have the lowest cost per click and the lowest conversion. I'm like, dude, it's cause X, Y, Z percent is still going back to your name. And like, I thought we were done with that. Like I thought we ended that. I thought we put that to bed. Um, I do believe a certain percentage of your budget should, because if your competitors there, you should, um, you know, whether it's 500 or 5%, like whatever, figure out what that is for you and with your company and, and figure that out. But again, like then, where are you ranking organically and how can we make the most out of those dollars? Right. I mean, it's, if I'm ranking number one in my market for all of my new make models and some of my use then, and some, I mean, a lot of fixed ops, well then 
I should be pivoting my digital marketing spend based on that, right? I should be being more effective and going after the areas I'm not ranking or the markets that we know is the battleground zip code because most great car folks know those zip codes off the top of their head. Like, oh man, if I could just sell five more in 27601, like then I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the number one in the market, right? Like whatever that is, like identify those areas, share that with your companies, share that with your vendor partners, and then you can you can make some cool things happen. And I want to go off that that fixed ops portion because that's you mm. don't make this point. I have a little bit of a soft spot for fixed ops. Yeah, that's something that drives me bonkers when when people and businesses are not tracking that. If your if your service page and your parts page are down consistently, that means your repeat and referral business is gone as well. Totally. If you're spending money. Looking to say now that when it comes to spending, uh, doing spend and fixed tops, it's going to be a little bit more. You're not going to use it for the most part, get the same bang for the buck. I get that. But looking to say, okay, what are we paying for this? And the results are for six months, we've been down. Okay, let's look at the SEO. Maybe, our, you know, really looking at it to say track, please yeah. track that. Your service appointment page, your tires page, all of those fixed dots pages, because if those are down, there is a problem. And it's not just from a marketing level. We're talking internally from a, a consumer and retention problem as well. That's like drives yeah. me bonkers when I look at this stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, fixed ops. It, it, it's so funny because it's like so vitally important. Uh, but we just looked, we get dealerships to rank in this order for our content purposes, new, used, fixed. Like what do you want to see? traffic on and fix is i'm not gonna say always last but it's like it's lasts a lot and then and, yep. and you know it's amazing like we focus on like oil change tires brakes batteries general service um i mean oil change coupon i think is one of the most like top search for terms in all of automotive and it's like let's put it last we'll get to it <laughs> we don't need it <laughs> <laughs> and, we'll, and like, we'll often be like, okay, look, like we have to get these pages in the first like few months. Cause like, I promise, like, just trust us. Like we just like, we got to try it. And like, it's amazing after a couple months, like, you know, fix ops is pretty humming right now. It's looking good. I'm like, yeah, mm, I, you know, I wonder why <laughs> that, help, that helps. Um, but you know, like you said, the good ones know that, um, the good people know how to sell out of the service lane. And I mean, that's obviously car, car business 101, but, um, there's a lot of cool things you can do when you do shed some digital marketing light on fixed ops. And there's some okay. people out there that are dedicated to it. that are really good. And I mean, it's, but there's some cool stuff you can do, especially if you dig into the data and into your database. And you know, there's people who have bought a car from you and then never came into service. And nope. there's a lot of them more than likely. And how, what are we doing about that? Right. I mean, that goes beyond just SEO, but so many places within the dealership. Amen. Amen. So pivot a little bit here. So we're still talking about SEO. Sure. But when we're coming to the, the joys of reviews and reputation management, and oh, yeah. a lot of people don't understand that what a massive and significant role this plays in SEO, especially local SEO. So let's talk about the uh, importance of this uh, dealership's SEO strategy when it comes to all this. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm a big believer so that you should have a sales service and parts listing for your GBP. Um, mm -hmm. I, with that being said, I will say if you are never, ever going to optimize your parts listing, there is a time on occasion where I think it, you can make the argument that it's sales and the service and parts is service and parts is one. Um, we've actually done some pretty cool research and it's, uh, I'll have to, I can share later the exact figures, but it's a insane jump in how many views you get on those profiles. Once you exceed, I think it's either 25 or 50 reviews. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like the people are there. I mean, you see far more people in the service lane per day than you do in the sales desk right so make it part of the process but again that's how you start talking about tying it all together right but when you put reviews on those profiles the seo ramifications are massive um right. and again like you know there was a fear when google came out with the three listing that we were going to just cannibalize our sales and be done with it and it's like nope those were searches that dealerships were just never showing up for, right? It was always the independents or whoever. So there's some real merit to making sure that that service and parts, like if you're going to do all three or two, whatever, like make sure you have the categories, make sure you're doing the posts, make sure you have the appropriate tagging, make sure that you have the proper photos, the service photos that some people have up are atrocious. Um, customers see that. Lightly. Yeah. I mean, it's bad. We've seen pictures of restrooms. Like we've seen it all. Um, but if you do make it look good, because a lot of dealerships invest some serious money into making sure their service base and their facilities are great. It's where our customers spend a lot of time hanging out, right? Show them that experience. 
that will come back tenfold from an SEO, from an organic visibility standpoint. And I mean, it's it's amazing what that can do by just following the basics. Like, um, just look at what's just Google yourself, look at your service profile, and then just go down the line. Like, how do my photos look? Is my name accurate? Do I have reviews? Do I have the right information? The right hours, right? Do I have the, the right coupons and all those things? Like, if you're doing all that, your fixed ops traffic will go up. I mean, purely just from an organic standpoint alone. And I'm going to pull up the April Simmons uh, example here. The during COVID, yeah, she's please. like, hey. Uh, why don't we focus more on service and fixed ops and parts? And if memory serves me, she they started out ranking, uh, was it Pet Boys, I believe, remember? Every time I say Pet Boys, I want to say Pet Shop Boys, by the way. That's a whole other story. But Pet Boys, that didn't date me a little bit there. But <laughs> Pet Boys, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. So anyone that says, oh, our sales and our service and parts, well, no. That is user error. You you don't sure. care about it. It's still the redheaded stepchild. And in fact, you can be outranking and all those things where I was you know, trying to outrank Firestone, out, trying to outrank yeah. AutoZone or whatever yeah. it may be. Th right. This is your chance to do that. But if you just let it die and say, we're going to put it up there, but we're not going to, if you have an automated reputation management software, is it for when RO is closed or how are you doing that? So you're directing, and maybe you can only do it to, to service. Well, then every couple of months, switch it over that the, the automated response to go now to parts so you can get reviews there, yeah. but mix it up to have those reviews. But I was, I was blown away when April told me that I was like, I, you might be the first dealership I've ever heard to outrank pet boys. Yeah. Is that correct? Totally possible. Yeah. It's totally possible though. I mean, it's same thing. Like for years, people told me we couldn't outrank auto trader and car gurus. And it's like, it is possible. You just don't have a content plan or a local SEO plan to make it possible. Right. It's like, you just ignored it. I mean, if you look at the average dealership's content on their website, I'd say 90% is dedicated to new cars and in one market. It's like, mm -hmm. well, how much of your revenue or profit even comes from new cars in just that market? It's like, well, you know, eh, it's like a question nobody wants to answer. It's like, oh, so you probably should have content for other markets and and use and and fix ops. And it's like, okay, this is how a whole plan can come to be. Right. Um, so, but it, it's amazing. It's just not something we want to always dedicate the time for, um, you know, and I'll, I'll blame some 30 day cycle stuff on that, but like, uh, you make the time started. again, organic can live longer than 30 days. Right. Like that is the actual goal is that it should be long, long term, Right. Um, so that's how it goes. Yes. I just, a while ago, dropped a clip from MRC where Sarah Cecilia was just saying the same thing. She's like, for the love, will we stop, just stop looking at 30 day cycles. No yeah. one clicks on an ad and thinks I'm going to buy this in 30 days. No, they're, they're, they're not going to buy it in 30 days. Like calm down <laughs> and stop holding your agencies accountable, not, not hold them accountable. But the fact that, oh, I can see this happen on day one. And by day 30, we didn't sell a car. Yeah. What? No, it doesn't work. <laughs> no way. No, I mean, that cycle, like, I mean, I, I think there's several people in the in the community that I think we both kind of live in that have really talked about, like, how a sales funnel today is not just, it's so different, right? And I like, I'll use myself, right? Like, we're just telling you, I've got two small kids. It took me like two and a half weeks recently to buy a freaking Apple pencil for my iPad. That's a hundred dollar buy, right? Like, but like by the time I looked at it and like, I was like, oh, that's the one I need. And then by the time I actually pulled the trigger, because I was like, Oh, I'll, I'll drive by Best Buy one of these days. I'll, I'll go in person. Like, no, I never did that. Like I had to order it. I didn't have time. Like that's a whole other, you could caveat that into the auto space as much as you want to. But like, it took me two and a half weeks to order a hundred dollar thing that I knew I wanted. And there's only two of them. Like it's very point blank. But yet like we expect that somebody to make like what? The second largest purchase decision of their life within 30 days, no problem. Like, dude, that doesn't happen. Like, and if it does, it's rare these days. And I mean, it's like, I mean, I know last time I, I was in the market for a vehicle, we leased a, an SUV for my wife. And it's like, like we were kind of all the way deciding up until like that day, like what we were, you know, where are we going to go? And and then by the time we got there and that was it. Right. But like, it was definitely not like, I definitely clicked on some ads along the way. Right. Like I'm, I'm testing, I'm like looking at where does this, where does this Where's go? The marketer in me, right? Um, trying to like diagnose who people are using uh, through their marketing, but nonetheless, right? But th that's how it worked. And like ultimately we ended up buying and it's, it wasn't in that linear motion that we all kind of hope it would, it would be. No, even someone that's addicted to Jordans. I have yeah. probably four different pairs of Jordans in my car right now. How they're many? For over a month. Yeah. <laughs> A month, exactly. <laughs> like, like, and I know, like, I know. Eventually, I'm going to get them. There's a pair that I used to have, 
the foot slides changed and they, they brought them back. So I was like, great, I need to get them. So I know I'm going to get them. They're all three are sitting in my cart right now. Really? And at some point I'll do it. But I'm just like, my friend and I were texting back and forth. Like, like I saw those pair of shoes, put them in the car. So I'm like, now I have four pairs. I'm not going to buy all four at once, but you know, at some point you you know, I'll get to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's a good so, chance I mean, of it actually. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, that's, and, but that's how people interact today. Right. I mean, it's, we're, we're, and again, like, and then you could layer in, like, if you look at the next evolution of buyers is it's going to, how much more is a social play going to be in fact, right? Because just what you just did, you texted a friend, you talked to somebody about it. Like you wanted that feedback. Right. And, uh, people are going to want that for vehicles too. And about dealerships. And it's like, how does that work? You know, um, how do you, how is that playing into dealerships marketing and, and how we're building into that? So, there's a lot at hand, right? That's in, the consumer has changed. Uh, people want it now faster than ever. And that's, you need to be there when they are ready to pull that mm -hmm. trigger. So. So speaking of, we, we talked out that this like segues into the next portion here about customer journey. So how mm -hmm. can dealerships use the SEO and then, you know, awesome SEO that's been optimized and actually doing something to enhance different stages of the journey? Yeah, perfect. Um, so I think it comes down to a couple of things. I mean, one, I, I still believe that the ultimate goal should be to capture. I mean, I think you mentioned it earlier that it should be the number one converting source for your dealership, right? So you obviously want that conversion first. When I look at like our keyword list, it's a nice blended thing of like things that we want to be showing up for that are a little bit higher, higher funnel because we want to introduce people to ourselves. We know that we can get there. We know that dealerships like want to be showing up for these things. Right. Uh, but then there's another host of keywords that are very much like right now, make model for sale type of situation. Um, so I would just encourage people to look at it as a blended approach, right? Like what am I not going to want to be just showing up for today, but for the next year, or two years or three years, because there's a lot of residual impact of SEO. We have a Honda store that has been on our SEO for since they were a very early adopter, um, Ashboro Honda. Uh, they were, we were like literally working out of a basement when they signed up and we like to pick on them about it um, today. But uh, thank you to them if they are indeed here. But uh, they still get an immense amount of traffic to their 2019 model conversion pages that we built in 2019 and 2018. And it's a crazy because you know, that's not the same person who's in the market today that we built them for at that time, yet they're still getting that traffic because they keep that inventory. It sells well. And let's face it because of rates and, and where they are today, people know they may not get the 2024 um, because of the price point. So they're shopping, they're looking back at features. So again, that's when I talk about that whole life cycle of a customer. Um, obviously we just ranted about fixed ops, so I won't you know, nail back into that, but you know, for me, SEO should be cognizant and be representative of your, all your makes, your models, your fixed operations, the profit centers for each dealership, because that content will live on. And there's a chance that Brooke Furness wants to, you know, buy a brand new vehicle today. So she's going to hit one page, but then she's going to drop out. She's going to look at a different vehicle on a, the same website. And then six months later, after point of purchase, whether it was with me or not, she's going to be looking for an oil change or a tire rotation. So how can I make sure that I'm there for that person too, right? So it should hit all three phases of the dealership. And if you're doing that across multiple markets, then that's how I think you can hit people up and down the funnel, as we call it now, um, no matter where they are in their buying decision or buying journey. Amen. It's, yeah, there, yeah I'm just going to say yes to that. Like it, it's, yeah, well, I'll let that one be, but yeah, it is, it's very, yeah. very important. So I know we talked about AI a little bit. When I talk a little bit about advancements and voice search, and obviously there's AI as well, but sure. how should dealerships be adjusting their SEO strategy to stay competitive with all of these advancements? Whew. Um, keep testing, keep trying and finding people who are open to that. Right. I mean, if you look at SEO companies across the board, um, you know, obviously again, I'm biased in this. So I'll just say digital marketing companies. How about that? Um, I mean, it's pretty clear who's testing and trying those things versus yeah. who is just not even, it's not even hitting their radar, right? Mm -hmm. At Reunion, we have a goal this year of launching 100 product enhancement experiments. Some of those are going to fall fat, flat on their face, right? Some of them are not going to work, but there might be five, maybe 25, maybe 30, who knows, that do work really well. And some of those are going to be around AI. Some of those are going to be testing new search platforms or testing, you know, how does our content rank in you know, Google's Gemini or whatever the case may be, right? Um, you, SGE has been one that's come up a lot, right? Like all of those things, like 
if your agency and your partners aren't talking about those things or aren't saying, hey, you know, we're looking at this so you don't have to, then that's where I would throw up like the, I won't say a red flag, but a, but a bright yellow, right? Um, for me. So understanding that those things are coming, they are here, they should be being talked about and they're not so bad and so scary, right? Like it, it's, it's, it's workable and it, it should be implemented into your plans and process. Your agency should be looking at those things. And if you have a partner you trust that's doing that, then I'd say, awesome, that's a great thing and better for all of us. Uh, because as those dealerships win, um, that's when some of the other folks will say, all right, cool. Like, I guess I need to do this and try this. But um, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I think it was just last week that, you know, ChatGPT dropped those cool videos from Sora. Oh, um, so cool. I mean, that's terrifying, right? I mean, terrifyingly cool in my mind, right? Like I can't even draw a stick figure. So to know that there's something out there that can produce video like that, and it's nuts. It's going to be applicable and, and available. Like we're approaching an era where all of that stuff's going to be possible. So, um, you know, I think some dealerships will be able to do some cool stuff internally long-term with, with some of those products and tools. Um, so that's something to always be considering well too, right? It's like, if you can harness that, um, then why not? Right. Give it a shot. Try it. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be different for each dealership and dealership group. Agreed. And I mean, there's, yeah, there, there's just uh, when that came out. I go and there goes and dies Shutterstock. Like <laughs> anyone that's Man. doing stock video, I was like, unreal, oh, and your right? your yeah, business unreal. just collapsed. <laughs> so. Unreal. I mean, I had probably like four or five friends and coworkers send it to me within like I don't know five minutes. It felt like, yeah. um, definitely overnight. And I mean, it's people that I know that have nothing to do with marketing, nothing to do with auto. Wow. And they're like, oh, this has to be crazy for you guys, right? And I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, it's something we have to watch, and it's like. I mean, it's nuts. I mean, looking at some of those videos and the, you so just real. can only imagine what the capability is going to be. I mean, this is this is version one. Yeah. Um, and you think of all the videos that that had, uh, I think it was, I'm trying to think about which AI show it was, but so many came out and built, they were building like these the actual movies that you thought were done by Steven yeah. Spielberg when it was all right. AI. I was like, yeah. what the hell? Like, this isn't, this is insane. And now yeah. we've got this. So it just <laughs> continues to uh, skyrocket. It's yeah, and it's not gonna stop, right? I mean, it's 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 here. It's it's not going anywhere. So it's just a matter now of like, how are we harnessing it, and how are we experimenting with it, and how are we, you know, utilizing it for good, right? And, mm -hmm. and I think that's, you know, that's a whole other realm that you could spend a lot of time talking about yes. that, right? But I mean, yes. again, like to get back to your original question, is like dealerships should understand that it's here, and it's you should embrace it in some degree, and like. Your agencies, you know, when we start talking about it, they're like, so I'm going to get a discount, right? Because, you know, it's AI. Some of it's got AI now. I'm like, well, wait a second. Hold on. Wow. <laughs> like, that's not how this works. It's yeah, still time, effort, energy, prompt, the training, all of these things that go into it. Buy so, the product. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Right. So um, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to see how it continues to evolve. Agreed. So before we wrap up here. Let's look at dealerships that are just starting to focus on the digital presence, sure. kind of new to them. What foundational steps would you recommend for building a strong SEO strategy? Yeah, great question. So first I would look at, you know, whether it's through an SEM rush or a Moz, or there's a lot of tools out there that will help give you some insights into where are you ranking today? Where are you doing well? Where are you not? Because most dealerships today are utilizing whether it's SEO or search, they're, they're using something to drive traffic. It's very rare today that um, that people don't are doing anything, right? So I always believe in the benchmark first, right? Look in your Google Analytics, and if you don't have the skill set to do that, find somebody that can, because that's ultimately still going to be the truth, right? Is like, is your traffic up or is it down or is it stagnant over the last five years? Um, any of those things, dramatic increases can be a red flag, decreases obviously, and stagnation in today's world should should throw some red flags. Now, I'll caveat that and say, if you're a Nissan dealer and you're stagnant, you should be pretty happy uh, according to our data today. Um, that's the one still answers to. Sorry, guys. But yeah. um, you know, some brands are just having better times right now than others. So understand that, right? Um, and then I would say start first with content, right? Whether you use a company or you try to produce something internally, whatever your steps may be, depending on your dealership setup, um, start with content and a well-optimized GBP. Um, there's a lot of trainings out there. There's free tools out there that can help tell you and guide you on GBP. Um, now, are you going to measure it and look at that ongoing? 
that's a whole other thing, right? But like, start with those two things. Start with that content, start with GBP. If a dealership can tackle those two things first, you should be seeing measurable increases in the organic footprint um, and then track it, right? Track it, evolve it, and then continue to get better, right? Those are the two things I would say, without a doubt, start there and figure out the rest as it comes to it. Love it. I love it. All right. Well, Chad, it is officially that time. Yeah. Time. We're jumping the light out with Chad Graves here. Yeah. <laughs> I love the sound effects. I had forgot that was coming. Um, and I, I'm such a fan. I love it. Uh, who needs Thank AI you. when you can do that? Um, you know, there's a little, little, little thing over here that does it for me. So we're good. We're good. <laughs> so for those that are watching, they can see your wonderful QR code right down here. Yeah, for those that are, are listening to podcast land, how can they find you and how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, I'm super easy to find. Um, so I'm all over LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. Uh, please follow, please find me. Uh, but also my email is just chad at reunionmarketing.com. I'm also all over the place. I travel a lot. I'm very fortunate to work with a lot of dealers all across the country. Um, so I'm often saying, you know, hey, I'm going to be here in a certain time. If you're close, reach out. I'd love to get coffee or lunch or dinner, whatever may work in your calendar. Uh, I'm super easy to get about it. And, and I, obviously you can tell from our, 55 minute session here. I'm super passionate about this stuff. So I'm always happy to, to chat or have those conversations. And any questions he will happy to help out as well. Like yeah, totally. he is, uh, yeah, very, very easily accessible. Except for my email apparently doesn't like you. Other than that, we're <laughs> yeah, good. It's because I'm wild, isn't it? Yeah. Super I'm like, funny. why the hell did I just not text you? Like what is wrong with me? It wasn't there. It was not even there. You can verify. It was not, it, it was just absent. Um, but yeah, that's Stuff happens, right? <laughs> it does. It does. All right. So the name of the show is Facts Not Feelings. So how are you differentiating facts from feelings, either in personal or in your professional life? Yeah, it's great. I mean, you know, reunions tagline, I think I said this earlier, uh, is data beats intuition, which I think flows right into facts, not feelings, right? I mean, like I said, benchmark everything. And I do that both in my personal and professional life is I try to get a bench line for where I'm at, set big goals, track our progress. And ultimately, I think that that's how you can achieve some pretty great things in life, both personally and professionally. I, I would have to agree with that. So yes, agreed. <laughs> All yeah. right. So if you could have any superpower, what's it going to be? I'm super basic with this. Uh, I want to fly or teleport, right? Like I spend a lot of times in airports and like I, I was joking with a friend earlier about, uh, you know, how you always, everybody that doesn't travel thinks the travel life is glamorous. Yes. And those of us that do travel are like, no, dude, like it sucks. Um, <laughs> or it can suck. How about that? Um, so let me teleport, right? Or fly whatever's going to get me from A to B faster. Um, that's ultimately going to be the win for me. Um, it's a basic basic superpower, but man, wouldn't it be awesome for most oh, time, parts it. of life? So I, I agree. Easier. You could show I, up in Vegas wearing Jordans with no issue, right? It's just like, seriously, boom, up down. Yeah. There you are. That would be it. I mean, when you're traveling, is that you're, you're depending on where you're going, is that you're in like sweats or something, you know, but back in the day I, I did do that. But I'm like, nah, it's, it's whatever. But I'm like a diet could automatically be all dressed, yeah. ready to go. And I have to Easy. sit in an airplane. Walk right into the meeting. Hours. Yeah. Crazy. Be amazing. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Easy, but so beneficial. Oh, that'd be nice. It'd be so up. nice. Okay. What is something that uh, maybe most people wouldn't know about you? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm a pretty open book. So that's a challenge. Um, you know, I care a lot about my family. I spend a lot of time with family. And, you know, for me, I think it's, I have big ambitions of where reunion wants to grow and where I want to be. And so those are the things I'm always excited to chat about. I don't know if that's a good one answer, but we'll roll with that one for now. All right. <laughs> it's all good. We get all sorts of different answers on that one. So it's all good. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> it is crazy to hear like things that you've known people for a long time. And you ask them that question, like, holy shit, I, I've known you for how long? I didn't even know about this. It's crazy. Yeah, totally. I lo love hearing that one. Well, Chad, thank you so much for being a part of this for it. I've just, as always, you and I, I talked to you and I learned so much. I so appreciate what you, you and everyone Likewise. at Reunion is doing. So thank you. Thank you for being on, on, on the show today. I super, super appreciate it. And you all know the, the drill at this point, find a way to serve, find a way to do, to help someone bring the joy in someone's life. It's open in a car door. It can be a kind smile. Just do something to better someone's life today. And that everyone, we will see everybody next week. <laughs>